Now we start section two. Section two starts on page 180 in your book. It talks about problem solving with proportions. So we're going to look at the slides for this and just go along with what we have in our book. We're going to be looking for missing terms. Those are the kinds of problems that we'll be looking at. So if you take a look at example one in your book on page 180, this is where we start. So we're going to be doing some examples that look like those. If you look at this, it says find the missing term for each proportion. 3 fourths equals w over 20. 3 fourths equals 27 over y. 2 over x equals 8 over 9. And t over 15 equals 3 fifths. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find the number that will make this true. So let's just take a look at what we've got. We're going to be doing all of these the same way. We're going to cross multiply just like we checked to see if a proportion was true. We're going to use that property. So we're going to do a big X on the problem. And we're just going to be multiplying. So we're going to say 3 times 20 is 60. And you can start on either side. And W times 4 is 4W. Four we're trying to get the W by itself. So you're always going to divide by whatever is next to the letter. And this is going to cancel, and you're going to be left with the W equals 15. So 15 is what makes that answer true. And if you put a 15 right there to check it, 15 times the 4 is 60, and 3 times the 20 is 60. That's how you'll know if what you've done is correct. So let's look at the next one that's there, that next example. 3 over 4 equals 27 over Y. And I can go in any direction. So I can say 3 times y is 3y. And 4 times 27, you can use your calculator if you want to, is 108. And then we divide both sides by 3. So 3 into 108 goes 6. So the 3's cancel and y is equal to 36. And again, I can check it by putting my 36 here and saying 36 times 3 and 4 times 27. And if those two things are equal, then we know that what we've done is correct. So that's what we're doing on each of these. What you should do now is pause the video and try to do the next set of examples and make sure that you get the same answers that are on my slide. We also want to take a look at one that has a mixed number in it just to make sure that you can do this. So we would need to take 2 and a half times 8 and 5 times A. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our calculator and do the 2 and a half times 8. So let's see, let's pull up our calculator. Let's see which calculator I have on here. I think I have the other one. Let me pull up your so let's do two and a half. So two and one half times the eight. So we can use our calculator, which comes out to 20. So on that one side, we have a 20. So two and a half times eight, we said was 20. Five times a is five a, and then divide. So A is going to be 4. Remember, we can check it. So even if your calculator, you know, if you're using mixed numbers, just use your calculator. If you come out with something that's a mixed number and you're doing it, just remember you can use your calculator to do the math. You know, don't let the fear of fractions be the thing that keeps you from being able to do this course. Some of you may start to panic because some of these problems will be in sentences or paragraphs because a lot of us hate word problems. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this and just calm down, take a deep breath, and read it for what it is. This one says, if four cans of cola sell for 89 cents, how much will 12 cans cost? So when we look at this one, we need to ask ourselves, we need to say, how can I turn this into a proportion? And where the comma is in the problem is going to be your, almost your dividing line in this problem. 
When we say 4, 489, that's almost like saying something is to something else, just like we did with our ratios. So you want to keep the things the same. So since this is cans and this is cans, those two things need to be in the same place in the fraction. So notice here I have cans up here and cans over here and then the cost here which is cents and we don't know the cost of the other one so we put that there. They match. You can put them any way you want to. For instance, I could put the cans down here and the cents up here as long as you are consistent with it. And once you get it set up, it looks exactly like what we've been doing. You just cross multiply. So if we look at this one, we crossed multiply here and we said 4 times x and 12 times 89. And then we just divide it. So we end up getting 267 and that's in cents. So let's, let's take a look at the math behind this one. Now we've already said that this represents cents and this represents cans. So this represents cans. Notice they're both on the top. I could have written it like this if I'd wanted to. As long as, like I said, I'm consistent. As long as both things are in the same place, I can do that. So when we do our math, we do 4x equals 89 times 12. You're probably going to want to take your calculator and do your math there. So let's see, 89 times 12 comes out to 1068. Divide both sides by my 4 because that's the one in front of the variable. So 1068 divided by 4 comes out to 267. Now, you have to be careful with your answers and make sure that they make sense. We're looking for the cost of 12 cans. If one cost 89 cents, would it be reasonable that 12 of these cans would cost $267? It's in cents. Since this is in cents, my answer is in cents. So this is 267 cents. And when we go to the grocery store, they're not going to say to us, ma'am, your cost is 267 cents. You need to make sure that you change it into something that's more reasonable. And remember that when we have cents, in order to change to dollars, we divide by 100 because there's 100 cents in every dollar. So this would be $2.67. So you need to make sure that your answer is reasonable and that it makes sense. And you need to make sure that when you set up your proportion, you're consistent. Like in this one, cans on top cents on the bottom or the other way around as long as you're consistent. We probably just want to make sure that we can do some of these application problems. So let's take a look at page 184 and maybe we'll look at number 52. It says if 121 miles, I'm just going to make some notes, trip took five and a half gallons of gas How many miles can be driven with a full tank of 13 gallons? Okay, so notice we have our numbers here and we have the units beside them. So we need to make sure that we're consistent. So if I put 121 miles, I need to make sure that on the top of my fraction, I also have miles because that's the way we stay consistent. I don't know how many miles, so I'm going to put an X. So if I have miles and the miles will go, 121 miles will go five and a half. I'm going to put five and a half there with that one. And then across from it, I'm going to put the 13. So 121 miles is to five and a half gallons as X is to 13 gallons. And you just want to make sure that you're consistent. So you're going to cross multiply. Five and a half times X is five and a half X. And then you're going to say 121 times 13, which comes out to 1573. And you're going to divide. And you're going to take your calculator, if you have trouble with fractions, and you're going to punch in 1573 divided by 
5 and 1 half, and you're going to use your fraction key. Let's see, when I do that on my calculator and I hit enter, I get 286. Now, let's see if that makes sense and see what the units are. That problem said, if a 121 mile trip took 5.5 gallons of gas, how many miles can be driven with a full tank of 13 gallons? And that makes sense that you could drive 286 miles on 13 gallons of gas. So this is the kind of problems that you're going to be looking at. I would suggest that you pause the video, look at page 184, try to do some of the odd problems because you have the answers to the odd problems in Moodle, and do a little bit of practice before you do your homework assignment for a grade.